Alhamdulillah La ilaha illallah Wa dahu la syirikullahu Everybody with the universe is doing well. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. As I was um, reciting the Fatiha, it came to my mind, right? That everything glorifies the Creator. Like literally, as I'm reciting Fatiha, it just came in my head. Everything glorifies the Creator. So when we're reciting the Fatiha, King, we are glorifying our Lord. We're singing high praises to our Lord. We are communicating to our Lord. And when we communicate to our Lord, our Lord communicates back to us. Yeah. If you don't have a communication with the Creator, God still communicates to you. But, but the frequency is not as high. Like, like if you tap it into to the um, Creator's frequency, right, and, and, and communicate with the Creator, your eyes, your ears, your brain, everything will be more clear to you. You'll really see everything like clear. I'm talking about clear. It's so like when that window was smudged up and you know you clean the window and then you say, whoa. Right? You will see things clearly. That's how it is when we, um, you know, touch the Creator, embrace the Creator, fall in love with the Creator. The type of sermon is called, put it in your mind, put it in your hand. Literally, put it in your mind, put it in your hand. And I ask the Creator to allow me to, like, you know, delve into that. Why did the Creator inspire me to um, come up with that title? Put it in your mind, put it in your head. The sermon ain't going to be long, will be short and sweet. I'm going to read from, um, let me just say this before I even start reading. We thank the Creator for His blessings. And I asked the Creator to allow me to say what it is he wants me to say. But um, I just want to say, if your children are acting up, you're being tested. If your money flow is slow enough, you're being tested. Right? If whomever is in your life acting up, you're being tested. Right? We are being tested in all areas of our lives as submitters, as conscious people who call on the Creator, constantly tested. But the test, as I may mention in the prior sermon, the test is not all that bad if you understand the dynamics of the test. Let me say that again. The test is not that bad. Tell yourself. The test is not that bad as long as I understand the dynamics of the test. Now, if you don't understand the dynamics of the test, then it's going to be overwhelming. You're going to be worrying and fearful. But if you understand the dynamics of the test, it will not overwhelm you. You may feel a little uncomfortable, which we all do. But if you are locking into the Creator, then the test will not destroy you. I'm going to say that again. The test will not destroy you. The test will elevate you to another level of your submission. Now just think about that. Think about that because we all have been tested. All of us in numerous degrees and ways. And maybe for some of us, when that test came, we may have felt some kind of way. But didn't we get through it? Think about it. We got through those tests. Why? Because we remember our Lord. We, we saw that we was in a powerless state, a powerless situation, right? So we turned to the Creator. That's why 
you know, um, I'm saying put it in your mind, put it in your head, but let me read from the Quran so I can just bring everything home. Look at Surah 23. Put it in your mind, put it in your hand. Okay, Surah 23. Because for some reason, it's like I've just been in 23. Just been in there. Okay, um, I gotta bear with me. Sometimes I cannot even read my own handwriting. Okay. The Believers. 2364. Then, when we requite their leaders with retribution, they complain. Do not complain now. We have given up all help from us. My proofs have been presented to you, but you turn back on your heels. You were too arrogant to accept them, and you defiantly disregarded them. Why do they not reflect upon this scripture? Do they not realize that they have received something never attained by their ancestors? Have they failed to recognize their messenger? Is this why they are disregarding him? Have they decided that he is crazy? Indeed, he has brought the truth to them, but most of them hate the truth. You hear what God is saying? Most of them hate the truth, right? Most of them, right? Indeed, if the truth conformed to their wishes, there would be chaos in the heavens and the earth. Everything in them would be corrupted. We have given them their proof, but they are disregarding their proof. So, right, right, right there, we know why there's chaos in the earth right now. Right? Number one, they're disregarding the proofs, right? They're disregarding the proofs of the Creator, right? And they want things to go their way, right? They're not thinking about the welfare of all humanity, right? They're just thinking about, I'm going to get mine, you get yours, right? I got mine, I'm good. You know, y'all got to fend for yourselves, right? Because there's enough resources in this planet, on this planet, to where everybody can live comfortably, right? Because the Creator said, said what? I made the earth habitable for you, right? Habitable. So that means that everything is proportioned out for every single person in this earth on this planet. Those who was here before, those who are here now, and those who are leaving out. Right? So, so now we know why things is happening the way that it's happening, right? The wars, right? The diseases, right? Um, you know, just the whole bunch of stuff. I think they got a term for it. Like we're in the times of Kali Yuga, which is a lot of fighting and anger and stuff like that, right? So, indeed, if the truth conformed to their wishes, there would be chaos in the heavens and the earth. Everything in them would be corrupted. We have given them their proof, but they're disregarding their proof, right? So this is what's going on, you know? People are disregarding the proofs, right? You tell them something is good for them, they don't want to hear it because they think they know it all, or they are sitting comfortably and each sect is rejoicing in their own tenets. That's the Quran. That's what the Creator is saying, right? They each sect, right? See, now when we look at the word sect, sect ain't just talking about um, religion, it's talking about mindset of people. Different mindsets of people are rejoicing in their tenets. And then when the Creator allows the truth to come, they are so set in their ways, they don't want to hear it. I'm good. Right? We're sticking to what our, the Quran says, right? They said, well, we're sticking to what our ancestors and what our mothers and fathers and so on and so forth. And then God comes back and said, even though they were wrong, even though they was misled, so this is why things is happening the way that it's happening within the earth. And this is why some things can happen to us. To us. If we don't take heed to these proofs that the Creator is showing us. Literally. That's why you put it in your mind, you put it in your head. 
What I mean by that is when we put what God reveals to us on the level and the existence that we are on, because what he may give to you, he may not give to me. He's going to give you exactly what it is according to the situation and mindset and thought process that you are ready for and that you are within at that moment. Yeah. Like literally. Wherever your head is at, right? Wherever your soul is at, wherever your spirit is at, wherever your feelings is at, wherever your thought process is at, that's how you will interpret and understand the message of the Creator. Right? Because we all don't think alike, do we? We read in the Quran, but do we all think alike? No! We don't. We don't all think alike. You might get it from a different perspective. I may get it from a different perspective. Right? But as long as we are unified that there's no God but God. Right? Right? And our main objective is what? To keep the harmony and unity. Right? Of the Ummah. Right? Whether it's a small Ummah or a large Ummah, we want to keep the harmony, right? And respect and strive for righteousness. That's the key. So that way we don't have chaos. Right? Because we've seen chaos, we know what chaos is, right? So we keep ourselves out of chaos. And if it comes, we know how to deal with it. Okay, so. Just stay with me. Indeed, if the truth conformed to their wishes, there would be chaos in the heavens and earth. Everything in them would be corrupted. We have given them their proof, but they are disregarding their proof. God is talking to everybody right now sitting here. Everybody's hearing my voice. Everybody in the earth. God is talking to us. He's saying that we have disregarded the proof. And Thank God that we are striving to get ourselves together. Are y'all in agreement with that? Right? Right? Look, we didn't pop up perfect. Did you pop up perfect? Doing everything you were supposed to be doing as a submitter? No, you did not. No, you did not. Oh, now I'm a submitter. Look, I'm a submitter now. Assalamu alaikum. It's deeper than that. So there's been times where we ourselves have disregarded the proofs. If we did not, why would the Creator send us to cut out? To check us, to let us know, hey, you're going off here, you're veering off the path. Come back to the path. Think about it. Right? So even as submitters, right, we got to make sure that we are not disregarding the proofs of the Creator. We have to, because we're not going to be perfect. We won't, because sometimes we want our way. And if it don't go our way, we get upset. I ain't talking to you. Got a resentment, feeling some kind of way. But yet you say you're a submitter. You make a salat. You fasting. We got work to do, all of us. And the blessing is that we are aware that we got work to do. That's the blessing right there, that we have been made aware that we got some work to do on ourselves, right? And guess what? We're in it for the long haul. We're in it for the long haul. That's the blessing. We keep striving, we keep coming, we keep commemorating and glorifying the Creator. Right? And like the brother always say, over time, right, we start understanding some things that we didn't understand before. Put it in your mind, put it in your hand. Right? You put what it is that the Creator has given us in our mind, and it will manifest itself in your hand. What is your hand? Your hand is your actions. Your hand is your deeds. Because a lot of times, don't our hands get us into trouble? Right? 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 So if we put it in our mind and we put it in our head, basically what I'm trying to say is that we have to do our best to strive and stay on a positive thought process so that our hands can do positive things for ourselves, 
for our families and for the community and for anyone that we come in contact with. But first and foremost, as we put it in our mind, we put it in our heads, we must do right by ourselves. First, do right by yourself first. The individual soul, you, the individual you, the individual mind. Put it in your mind, put it in your hand. Because when you put it in your mind, you put it in your hand, and you are following the course of your creator, right? Things will be smoother. I'm telling you, we know that. We've synced it in our lives as striving submitters. God works. The creator works for us. We know that it works. That's why we put it in our minds, we put it in our heads, and we say, Allahu, Allahu Kabir, Allahu Akbar, there's no God but God, right? Come to Salat, read Quran. You know, we're, we're, we're cleansing our thoughts constantly. Constantly cleaning up our thought process. Because our thought process leads us to what? The action process, right? If my mind is fogged up, it's going to show in my hand. My hand is my actions, right? How I'm doing, how I'm feeling, how I'm responding. If you're not responding right, that means your mind is not right. And your hand is causing harm. That means your actions is causing harm. Sometimes to yourself, a lot of times to ourselves, and to those closest to us. So we want to put it in our mind, put it in our hand. Okay? This is what we want to do. Because sometimes we put stuff in our hand and our mind ain't right and we don't know what to do with it. Are we clear on that? You ever got something put in your head but your mind wasn't right? and you mess things up, right? You blunder, you fumble the ball, right? Right? So when we put it in our mind, and if our mind is right, and we put it in our hand, we're gonna do the right thing with it, right? This ain't just about, you know, what we think it is. This, this hits every area of who we are as human beings in this earth. Some people think it's just a religion. This ain't a religion. This is a way of life. This is a, a, a thought process. And when you veer off, it checks you. It says, get back in the process. That's what it's for. I'm telling you, when you veer off or you um, or go astray, or you get caught up in some chaos like the Creator saying in the Quran, submission checks you. It's sort of like when you was a kid, right? And you know you did something, your mother said, didn't I tell you not to do that? Right? Well, this is what the Creator is telling us. It checks us constantly. But we have to constantly check in in order to be checked. Because if you're not checking in, you're not going to be checked because you're running on your own thinking. And we know when we do that, we mess things up all the time. Right? Man plans the plan, but God is the best of planners. So our Creator is telling us, listen, I gave you a free will, I gave you a mind, I want you to do it, but I want you to do a few extra things. And it's here, I'm showing it to you. I'm showing it to you through scripture, I'm showing it to you within yourself, and I'm showing it to you outside of yourself. In, in, within, and outwardly. That's how deep it is. We're not doing no religion. We're doing way of life here. We're not doing religion. We're doing way of life. How I carry myself. And when somebody make me feel a certain way, I say, I'm not going to respond like that. I'm going to respond the way that 
the Creator has been molding me to respond, which is taking the highest path. So we put it in our mind, we put it in our hand. We have given them their proof, but they are disregarding their proof. So we, you know, we seek forgiveness from the Creator for disregarding those proofs. Don't we? Right? We have to create to forgive us for disregarding his proofs. Yeah. We, you know, yes. Forgive us for disregarding the proofs. We were wrong. We made a mistake. Forgive us. Right? And then as we seek forgiveness, we forgive ourselves for what we did. As long as we do what? Repent and reform. That's key. So there's always a way out. Okay? So if we feel trapped or whatever we're going through, there's always a way out. The Creator can just bring us here, right? And give us what He's given us, allow us to understand what we're getting, you know, just to get it. We got it for a reason. And we got to constantly tell ourselves this every day. Matter of fact, this should be our constant thought process. God has given me something for a reason. I am here for a reason. The Creator is allowing me to go through this, to feel this feeling and emotion for a reason. What is that reason? Why am I feeling the way that I'm feeling? That's when understanding comes in. Because you got a lot of people, salam alaikum and this and that, but they don't got understanding of what the Creator is relating from the book. They don't got the understanding. They got the book. They got the outer garb, but they don't got the understanding of what the Creator wants us to understand. And on that, let us um, repent. So we glorify the Creator constantly. You know, we all been through some things. We've been hurt, right? Been lied to, deceived, all that. It's all the tests. And when those things happen, we just draw closer to the Creator. We hold on. If you gotta cry, let it out. You feel in some kind of way, go talk to somebody. Pray it out, release it. That's it. Don't walk around feeling some kind of way. You know? The blessing is that we got an outlet. We got a remedy. The Creator has given us a remedy that whatever ails us, don't the Quran says that that I, I don't know exactly, but Dr. Quran said that there, that there is a, um, a, a, a healing for whatever ails you, something along those lines. Okay, okay, okay. This ain't about no religion. And this is why, and this is why a lot of so-called religious, um, quote, unquote, and I'm not bashing, I'm not bashing. This is why a lot of these religious institutions are chaotic and got all this stuff going on because it's a religion. It's not a way of life for them because if it's a way of life, then there's certain things that wouldn't be going on in certain communities, quote unquote, that says we worship God, we call on God, and so on and so forth. Some people just in it for the money and the nice little trinkets and stuff. You know? Some people in it for ego. You know, there's many reasons. But the best reason to be in it is because you want to save your soul from a painful doom. That's the best reason to be in it.
because we can get the money and all that stuff. But guess what? It's going to be a wait for us on the day of Yama Kiyama. It'll be a wait for us in this world. I'm telling you, I don't want that burden on me. I definitely don't want that kind of burden. I'm about the money and the material. Listen, and, and winding it down and then closing, inshallah. Thank God, thank God that, you know, we are in a place that we have understanding of this path, of this way of life. We understand that ain't about what we got. We understand it ain't about the money, how good we look, how good we sound. We understand that it's not about that, but it's about what? We were told, build your soul. Right? Build your soul. We were not told, accumulate a lot of money. Right? Get the biggest house you can possibly get. Don't get me wrong, I'm not knocking that stuff. But what I'm saying is we are constantly seeking soul, soul, soulless, right? Soul power, soul food, soul elevation. So while we're living in the physical planet, right, we will be all right. Like the song says, baby, everything is all right, right? We all right. It's not that bad. It's, listen, if you think it's bad, you better, <laughs> you Go back to sleep and wake back up. If you think it's all that bad, because there's somebody wishing that the position that we think is bad, that they have the position that we think is so bad. This is why a true submitter is forever appreciative and humble in glorifying the Creator. Now let me read back from the Quran before I close out. Those who disbelieve, okay, I'm sorry. Are you asking them for a wage? Your Lord's wage is far better. You see that? You see that? So, so we can like preach and get all the money, but God tells us, the Creator tells us, right? Um, your Lord's wage, your Lord's wage is far better. He's the best provider. Provider. So that means you're going to be taken care of. You ain't got to worry no more. You ain't got to work too hard. And look, I'm not talking about when you die, man. I'm talking about why you're living in this earth. It's not going to be as hard as it would be. It's, look, it won't be as hard as it would be if you wasn't plugged in. If your plug is out, guess what? You can't power up. But if you're plugged and you keep plugging in, something is going to happen for you in the, in the dynamic of your life. It, look, we will go through some things, but those things we go through won't be as bad if we, it won't be as bad as if we weren't plugged in. But we are plugging in. And the Creator says, right, remember me, I will remember you, right? If you forget me, then I make you forget your very soul. What is God saying? You will forget you. You'll be wandering around and you won't know whether you're coming or going. That's how deep it gets. The Creator wants us to look at our eyes, our ears, our brain, our skin, our bones, right? The flowers, the trees, the sky, the water, look at our children, look at how when we were babies. Sometimes we gotta go back and pick up those pictures we had when we were children so we can reflect all over again to see where we came from. I'm telling you, sometimes we forget we so caught up in, oh man, I'm, I'm old and now. Sometimes take out your old pictures and look at how God took you from one stage to another. Where's your appreciation? 
Take out them old pictures of you and look at them and you will see the signs of your Lord taking you from one stage to another and making you a man, making you a woman, making you a conscious submitter. We don't want to forget. We want to constantly remember how the Creator has taken us from one stage to another so that we can remain humble and appreciative. So when we get in the goodies, we'll be humble. We won't be arrogant. I'm better than you. I got this, I got that. No, we'll be humble and say, Alhamdulillah, MashaAllah, thank you, my Lord, for your blessings. This ain't religion. This ain't religion. This is way of life. Most assuredly, you are inviting them to a straight path. Those who disbelieve in the hereafter will surely deviate from the right path. Even when we shower them with mercy and relieve their problems. You see that? God said that even after he, he, you know, he made a way for us, sometimes we forgot. Sometimes we forget. So we got to be conscious of that. This is for... This is to awaken your consciousness and let you know who you are, not who you think you are, or who you told you were, or who, you know, like those impressions and um, influences molded your thinking and told you this and that, so on and so forth, and then you had this um, false image of who you were. God is telling you who you are. The book is telling you who you are. And now that we're being told who we are, what are we going to do with who we are? What are we going to do? So we put it in our mind. We put it in our hand. So from now on, inshallah, we want to put those beautiful, positive thoughts in our mind. And then we want to facilitate plan of action in our hand. So when we interact with people, Right? They're seeing and getting the best of us. Why? Because we're getting the best from the Creator. Yeah. And that helps us become better with ourselves. So we're less angry. We're less argumentative. We're less want to always have our way and prove our point. And no, we're going to do it this way. We'll be open-minded. Because this is what true submission is about. I'm going to end on these, uh, these last two I asked. So God says, even when we shower them with mercy and relieve their problems, they plunge deeper into transgression and continue to blunder. So we ask you, Lord, to forgive us for blundering, forgive us for transgression. You are our Lord. We made that oath. We we made that oath. Then we made that oath when, when we were asked, am I not your Lord? And we said yes, right? Okay, that's a mighty oath. So, you know, we all, you know, going through to get through, but we're going to hold on, right? We're going to hold on, right, y'all? Yes, sir. We got to. We got no choice. Because you know what? The Quran was given to us, right? And God gave us a high science of mathematics, right? The high science of mathematics, when you do math, and then I'm going to end with this. This is how we know that it's from the Creator. We already know about the math. Now, check this out. When you're doing math, what do you have to do? You have to figure out things, right? So God has shown us through the Quran by giving us mathematics, figure it out. I've given you the book, I've sent the prophets, I've sent the warners, I've sent the messengers, I've shown you the mathematics, I've shown you the signs within yourself and the signs outside of you. Look at your life. Figure it out. I don't want robots. I want submitters. God don't want robots. He could have made everybody do what he wanted them to do, but he gave us a free will. So the Creator is telling us, 
figure it out. Figure it out. Whatever's going on, figure it out. Inshallah. Let us come to prayer.